We continue with the other featured poets. Thank you very much for that. Uh, can I welcome back Francis White? I tried with that earlier. I think I can sit on it with that for a while. You need a dry martini next to it. It's funny when Alice read the poem about um, Wendy Cope, because the first time I saw her, she was sitting on a stool, and I wrote one called I Don't Like Standing Up to Read, I Want to Sit Like Wendy Cope. <laughs> I can't remember it. <laughs> start with a couple of poems about co communication problems between people and um, I lost contact with a good friend while I was at university and when I tried to trace her it was difficult and this is what happened. Losing touch. Long time no see. Letters unanswered, unforwarded. <coughs> Finally I tracked you down to a room where you had found work in a care home. I could see the years had been long ones. White overalls, sensible shoes, tidy hair. You sat surprised in the dark corner on your single bed, offering little, avoiding my eyes, ignoring my questions. A distant smile in the space between us dashed all hope I'd find you spiralling on a new adventure. No sign of your old tote bag. No beads nor record sleeves to hint at the heady music that filled our days. Where did you leave your red and orange kaftan? The sandals that hitched to North Africa and home again. I didn't expect to find you like this, nor to leave you with your hands trembling. Um, and the next poem might sound a bit odd, I've written it in three parts. And it's based on my correspondence with my nephew, who's half Japanese. He grew up in England, but now he lives and works in Japan. And this is a record in haiku type verses taken from postcards and photos that we've exchanged. So it might sound a little stiff, but the first part is Greetings One, and it's from my nephew, Geoffrey Ken. Winter in Japan, cold and dry with clear skies, no sign of snow yet, nor turkey for sale. I envy your Christmas lunch. We wait for New Year. Zojo Temple Gate, Tokyo Tower beyond, lit up by fireworks. Japanese New Year, preparing sober noodles, good health on the way. Year of the Tiger, I hope you remain as strong, 2010. We will meet again in the upcoming year, warmer days ahead. The garden in June, hydrangeas in full bloom, sipping fresh green tea. Randma Yukiko, sitting in tranquility, fragrant peony. Cranes fly in a line. Fiery waves dance on the sea, sunset on Fuji. Greetings to are my replies to Geoffrey Ken. Winter in England, cold and wet with cloudy skies, spells of frost and snow, plum pudding steaming, turkey roast in the oven, we all put on weight. Big Ben chimes midnight, fireworks crack above the Thames, the old year passes. <coughs> Traditional walk, New Year's Day in Richmond Park. Pen ponds are frozen. Ducks waddle and quack. Signs warning, keep off the ice. Children throw breadcrumbs. 2010, New Year's resolution made. We will keep in touch. Seasons pass quickly. 
You will come for September, your cousin's wedding, friends and family, the happy couple, laughing, champagne corks popping. You will leave again, taking conkers in your bag, flying to Japan. Greeting three is the sequel. Greetings are read out. You can't attend the wedding. A new job keeps you. You are translating Japanese into English. Autumn comes and goes. England deep in snow. Global recession bites hard. End of December. Year of the rabbit. Your new year card promises a visit in spring. A news flash in March. Earthquake off northeast Japan. Deadly tsunami. Thousands lost or drowned. The reactor is damaged at Fukushima. News travels slowly. You are alive in Tokyo, shaken and dizzy. Radiation leaks, a contaminated sea, blossom blown away. But you want to stay. Tokyo is a safe place. They have told you so. I live 10 minutes walk from Teddington Lock, and the last, <coughs> the last tidal reach of the Thames, and like all tidal areas, it changes constantly. And I just wrote this little poem called Thames Tide. The Thames swells with the high spring tide and silences the raging weir. Willows deep in waters wide, the Thames swells with the high spring tide. I watch the seagulls wheel and glide, their sharp cries carried loud and clear. The Thames swells with the high spring tide and silences the raging weir. Um, you heard my poem in the first set, if you could hear it above the music, about riding in the full energy of youth. And here's one about riding with the limitations of advancing years. The ride. How often have I longed to ride once more on horseback, far beyond these gates, singing a wild song, your heart beats my only bond. I take the reins again, remembering the coarse tug of your mane. Rising slowly down the lane, now the years have staked their claim. We pass the dry stone walls and empty barn, once filled with summer's hall. Fresh bedding for your stable, hay for cattle in the stall. I guide you gently round some fallen logs we'd have cleared in one bound. Who's so light above the ground, I still hear their vibrant sound. You turn your head sideways and look at me as if to read my face, sensing how I'd love to race, <coughs> settling for an easy pace. <laughs> Legs heavy with the strain, today I ride steadily through the pain, letting my tired limbs reclaim the warmth coursing through your veins. And last of all, I've, um, my last poem, <coughs> for Bob Dylan is the last light-hearted take on an, an accident I had and it's a pastiche of Bob Dylan's Talking Blues. <coughs> it's called Talking Black Eye Blues. I walked into a lamppost the other day, talking and looking the opposite way, landed in a heap upon the ground, the world was spinning round and round. Someone took me to see a nurse she said that bruise will get much worse. Shone a light into my eye, shook her head and gave a sigh. Now did you have too much to drink or was it the man, she grinned and winked. It's quite a crack but you ain't dead yet, so go on home and don't you fret. My right side aches, my left side sore. I draw the curtains and lock the door. Feel like I've been through World War Three, so I listen to a Bob Dylan CD. <laughs> he makes me laugh, he makes me cry, he makes me think and lifts me high. As blood goes pounding round my head, 
I dream of him on his big brass bed, <laughs> a wily master of disguise with gravelly voice and piercing eyes. And even though I'm black and blue, Bob, I want to be tangled up with you. <laughs> Please. I hope you've noticed.